We have some rules at our house that I insist must be followed. You know, I have seven children and 11 grandchildren, and over the years we've been foster parents for about 20 children. And if you don't have rules, or if people in the house decide just to follow their own rules, our family and our house would be a mess. An example for some of the rules that we have at our house is everyone must go to church on Sunday. Everyone. Everyone does their own dishes. If you get caught not doing your own dishes in our house, you have to do everyone's dishes in the family the next day. And the other kids have no mercy. You know, they'll have a seven-course dinner then and use extra forks and silverware and spoons and dishes and bowls. So it, it makes it kind of fun. So most people in our house do their own dishes. But I don't think, Father, I don't think you did dishes when you stayed over. It doesn't, doesn't apply for them. The other thing is the chores. We have uh, some chores we have to do around the farm to make things go good. And one of the rules is the animals must be fed and watered and cared for before you eat your meal. All the chores must be done before I get home from work. If they're not, you get two additional hours of my chores. And you don't want those. Now, the rules seem kind of harsh, but usually the complaint at my house is, is why can't you kids be more like other kids? and not do your chores so I can get some of my stuff done. I usually don't have them doing my chores because they do their chores so well. And so they get done. An example of a chore for maybe younger kids, even at four or five years old we start them on chores, is like feed and water the chickens. Collect the eggs and wash the eggs and put them in cartons to get ready. And whatever we don't eat, we like to bring to the food pantry at the end of the week so that the, they can do that. With the vegetables in the garden or some extra meat we might have, some, some of the animals that we have. So we bring that to the food pantry. In fact, uh, when my son Hugh was about seven, he said uh, we were having family dinner. And he said around the dinner time, he said, uh, Dad, he said, you should give more money to poor people. Because he's thinking, you know, I'm doing my part. Dad never comes with me on Friday to give the eggs and things to the poor. But so maybe you should give more, Dad, and do your part. And I said, yes, Hugh, maybe I should do more, and I'll do more and give more to poor people. And then he thought for a few more minutes, and he says, Dad, and I said, what, Hugh? He says, Dad, don't give them all your money. <laughs> we might need some money to do some other things around the house or to buy some stuff for ourselves, like toys and good stuff and clothes. So I said, yeah, that's good. I'll give them more money, but not all of my money. And then a few minutes later, he said, Dad, and I said, what, Hugh? And he said, maybe before you give the poor people your money, check their wallet. <laughs> because if they have money in their wallet, they really don't need your money. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll give them more money, but not all my money. And I'll make sure I tell President Obama maybe to do something like that, too. <laughs> you know, in today's first reading, Moses reviews all the good that God has done for them and reviews all the rules of the family of Israel. Moses is like an aging grandparent who is going to pass away soon, and he's sharing the family story. He's sharing the family rules. He's sharing the family history with the people. All the cousins and the family members are gathered around to hear him speak and to hear these words of wisdom from Moses and, they, and what to learn to live a good life. And you listen to these stories and are amazed at the stories he tells. And he tells his people that God's been with them and he's done great things for them. And he has, he's going to continue to be with them if they follow his rules. Which is mainly the rules of God are, are to love others and love God and to forgive. If you turn your back on God and his laws and his ways, the blessing is going to go away too. And God will give us what our hearts want. If we want God and his blessings, God will give it to us. If we want to follow our own rules, God will leave us alone. Moses tells us to observe God's commandments carefully and do not add to his rules or subtract from his rules. The Pharisees in the gospel story forgot about this. They added 600, over 600 more rules on top of the rules that Moses had given. Later in Deuteronomy, Moses tells his people to teach your children. Drill it into them. Speak to them at home and when you're away, whether you're busy or at rest. Write them on your doorposts. Bind them to your wrist. Tie these rules to your head. Drill them into your children. In the Bible, we see many of these old patriarchs doing this before they die, 
telling us what is important and how to live a good life and how to get to the promised land. And our new promised land is heaven. Come here, they say. Let me bless you. Let me hold you. Let me touch you. Let me teach you. Pope Francis has been teaching a lot on families. If you've been looking at some of his words that he's been teaching the observer online, and this week's message was similar to Moses' message. He says, teach your children. And specifically this week, he wants us to teach our children three things. One is how to pray. And how to pray with your hearts. Not just the Our Father and Hail Mary and those things, but how to pray, how to have that conversation with God. The second thing he asks us is to teach them Teach your children the Bible. There's great stories in the Bible that we can share with our children, and it's something we have to know. The third thing is something that seems very simple, but it's so important. Pope Francis asks us to teach our children the sign of the cross and how important that is to our faith. You know, Father McKittrick, for this past year, has been kind of like Moses, the old grandparent. He's come back to us this year. And he's giving us blessings and teaching us what's important to live a good life and how to get on this pilgrimage to heaven. And he's saying goodbye to us, if you listen to his homilies. He's saying goodbye to us in his own way. And he tells us things like this. Put down your phones and iPads and iPods and i whatever, and talk to each other. Give to the poor. Feed the hungry. Love each other. Help each other. And that's what that second reading from James is about, too. Father McKittrick also said this about our parish, St. Patrick's. He said, this place, St. Patrick's, is very special to me. I was pastor here for 14 wonderful years and built some wonderful friendships. And it's great to be back once in a while to share our faith and our journey together. It's still a wonderful church, he continued to say. Father Godwin, Deacon Dennis, and the staff do a great job. He said, you know, I read your bulletin every week online. And he said, there's so much going on. He said, when I'm done, I have to take a nap. (laughs) But then he continued and he said, get involved with this parish, those things that are in the bulletin. Take it, read it, and get involved. Meet new friends. Join something and become involved with it. We have to take advantage of these spiritual blessings. And Again, we must teach our children these things. If we want them to join us in the new promised land of heaven, they must know their faith. They must come to church. And they must have their own personal relationship. Their hearts must be part of Jesus. I'm lucky I had a dad, a father, and a grandfather that taught me many different skills. How to work on a farm and carpentry. How to work on engines and cars and things like that. You know what? I really didn't like some of those lessons when I was doing them. But I'm very grateful that they taught me those things now. And another thing I'm eternally grateful for is in their own way, they taught me as men how to pray. Two big, strong men. One, a fireman from the city of Chicago who was a hero in my eyes all the time. That, that a very strong man. And my, my father, who was a, a semi-pro boxer and a, a strong construction worker, that never back down from an argument or fight if he thought he was on the right side of the fence. But when it time, came time to come to church and receive communion, those men did bow before their Lord and God and pray and taught us how to do it. And if you didn't behave in church, you know, it didn't go well for you after church. And when a woman needed a seat if church was crowded, you were the one that got up. They gave you an elbow and you got up and let the woman sit down and they stood with you and put their hand on your shoulder, and it made you feel good. You know, when I was teaching confirmation 10 years ago, there was one young man, he dropped out of confirmation. His family let him. He was going to miss two soccer games because the confirmation classes conflicted with his soccer schedule. And the parents let him. Now, what was that family teaching their kids, their child? What was important in their life? It sure wasn't church. It sure wasn't the Bible. It was soccer, and I know he didn't become a professional soccer player. I still see him around town, very nice young man, but he never received the sacrament of confirmation. We must teach our children what's important and what's important in their lives. And I like the acronym from the Bible. I've said it before. uh, The Bible stands for basic instruction before leaving earth. We have to teach our children, like Pope Francis said, teach them about the Bible. 
Teaching children sports is great. I love sports. All my children are involved with sports. But they need to know their faith more. We need to show them their faith by the way they, that we live our lives and show them that we have a heart for God. And we have to show them where our heart is and what's most important in our lives by the way we love God, love others, and forgive.